Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Victor Ferraro from Ericsson. Uh, and I'm going to talk today about uh, management, ordering, and orchestration of network slices. Um, let me start with a quick recap of uh, network slicing, what it is, and what is important of network slicing in 5G systems. So, network slicing conceptually is a technology that has been discussed for quite a long time. But with 5G systems, the technology becomes uh, uh, available. And uh, it becomes available to the point of making it a, a game changer for a uh, network evolution. So with 5G uh, systems and with network slicing, it's possible to deploy uh, virtual logical networks on top of a common infrastructure that is shared by multiple tenants. With network slicing, we can achieve, uh, let's say, virtual networks that are fully isolated and independent from each other to the point that if something goes wrong in one network slice, it shouldn't affect the others. Or to the point that if the operator wants to add a new uh, network slice, it can be added or it can be uh, removed without impacted, impacting the other slices that exist in the network. So, 5G systems uh, are coming with a big diversity of service characteristics that operators can provide. And network slicing comes uh, as a key tool, as a key technology to enable this uh, and make it viable from a business perspective. So services should be able to be deployed at scale and economically feasible, and network slicing becomes the technology that enables that. One of the key themes for network slicing is the end-to-end -end, uh, aspects. So 3EPP standards have set the uh, industry framework in order to support end-to-end -end, uh, slicing. Here you see a graph where it represents the uh, end-to-end the -end architecture. And here there are two important di dimensions. We have uh, the traffic view and we have the management view of network slices. So the traffic aspects uh, are basically defined uh, in 3BP SA2, and the management aspects are defined in 3BP SA5. As you see, there are a bunch of identifiers that the networks uh, need to use, uh, and they are need to be configured and need to be deployed, comprising all elements, all network functions that are involved in the end-to-end -end service, starting from the device, going to the access network, to the transport, and to the core network. Different uh, service types can be configured, and the standards has to specify different uh, values for those service types. One of the key uh, elements is the uh, slice identifier, is the SNSSI, single network, single network slice uh, selection assistance information. This uh, SNSSI is used to select and partition network resources that need to be uh, configured end-to-end -end in order to enable and to deliver specific service characteristics. The SNSSI is used, uh, uh, contains uh, uh, the slice type and also the slice differentiator, and is used in the context of the PLMNID. And if you want to get some figures uh, in the standards today, it's possible to define up to more than 64,000 SNSSIs. And this is the figure that the standards uh, allow to, to be set up. So it, just imagine the amount of uh, possibilities or the amount of uh, um, identifier that can be set in order to drive uh, uh, business uh, requirements. As we said before, slices can be added or can be removed without affecting the others. And for example, it's possible to set up a new um, uh, set of network functions uh, and configure an SNSSI for them and enable this identifier also in the radio access. So for example, the uh, device cannot only be connected to a single uh, network slice, but also to uh, a multiple uh, to multiple and simultaneous uh, network slices at the same time. And in the standards, there is a 
functionality specify called URSP, UE user equipment routing selection policies that enables uh, rules uh, that are provided from the FIGIC or system directly to the device and uh, the device can simultaneously connect to over simultaneous slices and uh, provide or deliver different uh, applications uh, to the different slices. So just imagine the, uh, the potential that comes out of these capabilities uh, and helping operators to explore also new use cases and revenues uh, possibilities. So, as we said before, uh, 5G systems open up for a very diverse set of uh, service characteristics. And uh, if we look uh, at them, we, we can see a bunch of those requirements that are starting uh, or that can be uh, can be requested for different charging models, uh, different coverage uh, areas, uh, locations, uh, different uh, isolations or degrees of isolations, uh, latency, mobility, density of the devices, uh, priority levels, uh, speed uh, that the, that the uh, device needs to handle, availability and reliability. So these are uh, high-level requirements that the 5G system need to need to execute via network slicing, and uh, here comes the challenge: how those service requirements can be uh, enabled by means of uh, uh, network slicing technology. So, the challenge is that there are many parameters that need to be handled manually, and these parameters could create a uh, very uh, expensive and long time to configure the different uh, segments of the networks and it could generate uh, errors if they are handled manually. So the only way to enable this is via automation. So automation becomes a necessity uh, in order to enable uh, network slices at, at high uh, speed and, uh, and at, at scale. So the challenge is how we see the network uh, that we have today. How do we expose the different uh, parameters uh, as business intent and how the uh, automation is enabled uh, to configure all necessary network functions that form the service end to end to configure the, the configurations and to make sure that the service can be uh, properly optimized and assured to deliver the expected uh, characteristics. So the automation uh, means that we have to be able to, for example, apply certain uh, feasibility check and determine what are the radio resources that needs to be used based on the coverage that needs to be uh, provided, select the right uh, point of presence uh, where the uh, 5G core functions need to be deployed based on uh, latency requirements and also based on potentially some operator constraints on how the, uh, for example, the images for those 5G core functions uh, are built and what is the compute capacity that those images required. And, uh, we have to be able to establish the right transport links in order to connect the radio with the core functions and determine the, the latency that uh, fulfill the, uh, the, uh, the uh, service requirements. Then on top of that, of course, we need to configure uh, the necessary quality of service uh, parameters in the radio access in the 5G core and make sure that these quality of service information is deployed consistently end to end. So when the service is uh, launched, then it can uh, deliver the right uh, speeds or the right latencies that the, uh, the business requirements are expecting. Here, uh, we see here that the, uh, it's vital to get uh, a process in, in the network to be able to order and orchestrate uh, slices, starting from a business intent, 
and moving all the weight into uh, the orchestration layer that will secure that all necessary uh, uh, configurations and checks, feasibility checks and uh, assurance uh, configurations are properly deployed in order to enable the service. Here it's the, the main flow uh, that that we are uh, looking at and it's a typical uh, service order management flow that uh, starts with a request uh, from a, um, a user portal where the user uh, or the customer can log in and uh, select the specific uh, service and it can specify the specific characteristics of the service. Those characteristics uh, are triggered into the orchestration uh, uh, layer and then the orchestration layer takes the, uh, the full uh, control deploying the necessary uh, uh, configurations and network functions based on the fulfillment to fulfill the service request. This, uh, the uh, slice is successfully created and then uh, at this point subscribers can be uh, assigned to the slice and the traffic can be uh, executed there and at some point uh, the, the slice might be terminated again uh, uh, or, or could be reconfigured uh, via uh, this portal and uh, subscribers should be migrated out and the slice and the network functions uh, resources should be removed. So with this flow, we achieve uh, one of the key, um, or we address one of the key challenges that uh, services can be deployed automated and products that operators can offer to, to their customers can be less rigid and more differentiated, addressing a, a more complex uh, consumer and enterprise demands. So what happens in this uh, um, orchestration flow? This slide represents the, uh, the key uh, building blocks uh, to be able to design, order, orchestrate and assurance uh, network slices. As said before, the, uh, the flow always starts with the service intent. It represents the, uh, the characteristics that the service uh, uh, requires and that are uh, that need to fulfill the uh, the business intent. The system starts with the uh, design, so all necessary um, artifacts have to be enabled, and these artifacts are basically service and slice templates that can be exposed to the uh, BSS domains to the order management systems. Uh, full providing the, the parameters that could be set up from, from the business uh, side. It includes all the necessary descriptors that are needed uh, uh, in, the net, in the network, configuration templates, uh, service assurance profiles and policies to even uh, execute uh, closed loops to retune uh, the network and to retune the, uh, uh, the service in order to Keep, make sure that the characteristics or the SLAs can be fulfilled constantly. Also, another important uh, piece is the uh, topology aspect. So the, uh, in the solution building blocks, the, it's important that there is an awareness of the resources uh, that needs to be uh, connected end to end in order to, to deliver the entire uh, service. This is the design time. Then we move to a deployment phase where the order is provided from the uh, from the BSS. It goes to the uh, orchestration and then the orchestration will basically execute a number of uh, workflows. Uh, looking at the uh, topology information, uh, looking at the uh, status of the resources and potentially selecting uh, smart uh, places where these resources should be uh, deployed, uh, sorry, the, the network functions should be deployed, and finally determining the configurations that need to be sent towards the different uh, parts of the network, the cloud infrastructure or the network management systems uh, in, uh, in order to deliver the, uh, the, the right configuration, like for example the collective service as, as said before. 
then the next step is that the uh, the slice will be running and then uh, uh, performance management, fall management information will be collected from the different, uh, from the cloud infrastructure, from the management systems. And this will generate the, uh, the necessary KPIs that can basically verify that the service is fulfilled according to, to the needs or eventually creating a closed loops and uh, with policies to retune the network and to make sure that the SLAs can be kept as, as needed. In the standards, the, uh, the 3GPP has uh, already uh, specified um, an end-to-end -end, uh, management system for network slicing. It comprises a set of uh, network functionality, uh, network slice and management functions and network slice uh, subnet management functions and APIs that can drive uh, the different uh, slice state models and the transitions. So with these functions, you can uh, prepare, commission, operate and decommission end-to-end uh, -end slices. And these operations are mapping the uh, the operations and the process uh, I was uh, that were shown in the in the previous slide and of course these functions they need to work uh, 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 or integrate uh, operate with uh, necessary elements in the OSS domain to be able to execute the uh, uh, and to be aware of the uh, topology aspects uh, interact with policy functions, uh, smart uh, workload placement functions, and uh, service assurance functions in order to uh, monitor properly uh, the service. So this is the management uh, layer that is specified on top of the end-to-end uh, uh, -end slicing framework, as, as we saw before. And with that, it's possible to um, uh, automate uh, and provision the life cycle man and, and handle the life cycle management of network slice uh, based services at the scale and handle intent driven hierarchical and cross domain service orchestration dividing let's say the problem between the uh, uh, or the, the problem between the business uh, domain and the, the different uh, um, subdomains where a specific and more complex uh, configuration needs to be executed. One key thing is the multi-vendor aspects in this architecture. Uh, we know that the uh, networks are multi-vendor uh, by definition in, in radio, in, in transport, in core, uh, enabling uh, uh, multiple network functions, uh, network functions, management functions. And this orchestration stack needs to be deployed on top of uh, on top of these uh, multi-vendor scenarios. And there could be multiple ways to to enable it. And uh, as I said before, to enable uh, multi-vendor, uh, the, the management functions for network slices and subnet network slices need to come with the standard APIs. Uh, both northbound and southbound uh, that should comply to 3PP APIs and potentially to other standard forms like, like TMF, for example, in order to secure the, uh, the multi-vendor integration aspects. So we can have uh, scenarios where orchestration could be uh, handled uh, in, um, in multiple tiers, multiple layers and to enable uh, multi-vendor uh, uh, solutions as shown in the, in the picture. Ericsson has a uh, dynamic orchestration uh, solution uh, for 5G. This is the, uh, the building blocks or the, the products that uh, compose the solution. And uh, this enables the uh, full uh, automation and life cycle management of network slices, uh, including design, ordering, orchestration, and assurance. These are the different uh, products that compose the, uh, the Ericsson uh, solution. And uh, these are the key, the key functionalities that are enabled.
we have reached the uh, undeployed this uh, solution um, and enable it uh, during 2021 uh, alongside some of the front runners uh, with the front runners and lead customers in this area. This slide shows you some of the Ericsson achievements uh, during uh, 2021. We have been able to uh, deploy and showcase the multi-vendor uh, solutions uh, orchestrating uh, transport and uh, 5G core. Uh, we have been able to uh, showcase and deliver world first end-to-end -end services like sorting and orchestration um, including BSS, OSS, uh, devices, radio and core with end-to-end -end quality of service uh, securing the uh, throughputs uh, and delay requirements during uh, moderate load conditions. We have been able to uh, also achieve uh, a dynamic quality of service differentiation uh, in the slices, so open, opening up APIs to handle quality of service dynamically via uh, network posture functions and, and policy control functions in the 5G core with uh, orchestrated quality of service from end to end. And we recently have uh, also achieved a uh, world first uh, uh, or URSP um, uh, enable uh, user equipment uh, accepting, accept, accept, accepting to multiple and simultaneous slices uh, with 5G core capabilities and uh, uh, integrating with lead uh, vendors, uh, GUI vendors, uh, and showing the, the possibility and showing the, uh, the technology readiness. We are also working with uh, more milestones um, uh, in order to enable multi-vendor aspects, uh, in particular to uh, how to deploy a single NSSMF with multi-vendor run slicing and also uh, activating uh, more functionality in the radio access to be able to resource, uh, to select and resource partitions uh, uh, based on network slicing framework, uh, which will become the next step, uh, providing installation uh, and securing throughput and latency requirements, uh, even in, in high load conditions. So, all in all, uh, thank you very much uh, for for this time. I hope you have got a good understanding of uh, the key uh, challenges and the key uh, building blocks uh, for slice network slicing orchestration, uh, ordering, and assurance. And uh, thank you very much. <laughs>